Hello, I'm Derek from Inflatable Sup Authority, and this is my review of the Nixie Monterey paddleboard. Who is the Nixie Monterey for? Nixie Monterey is a perfect board for beginner paddlers who are just starting out. It's also great for larger guys and gals, or even taller guys and gals that need to get their stability. Fantastic board for beginners. When inflated, when both bladders are inflated to 15 psi, it is feels supremely rigid. This board is also great for expeditions. So as you can see, there is three rows of bungee deck webbing at the front, three rows on the back, and it's also great for families if you want to take a kid, a dog, or even you could have two people on this board at the same time, one sitting, one paddling. What SUP activities can you use for the Nixie Monterey G4? So you can use this board for SUP yoga. This is a great kayak hybrid. I just paddled it as such and went really well in the water. It's also a great tandem inflatable paddle board as well as perhaps the go-to choice in Nixie's lineup for fishing. As you can see, it comes with 10 action mounts Scotty mount and a lot of room for gear, especially like tackle boxes, crates, etc. Now we'll go over the specs of the Nixie Monterey. So this board is 11 feet 6 inches, similar to Jilly Mino and the Blackfin XL for, uh, from iRocker. It is 34 inches in width, it weighs 25 pounds. And the rating on Nixie's website is total of 400 maximum capacity. So this is one of the better constructed ISUPs in my opinion. This board is made of dual layer fusion technology, which means it's two layers of PVC welded together, machine pressed together, I should say. It also features carbon side rails. So you can see right on the side here, carbon reinforced. This helps keep the rigidity of the board while giving it another extra layer of protection right on the sides here. So you can see that it spans along this distance. And of course, perhaps the most unique thing about this board is that it actually has two chambers. So it has a chamber here. You can kind of see the indentation. So all along there, it goes around. So there's a chamber there and then the outer chamber that surrounds it right here. Both are rated to 15 PSI and when done correctly, this board is very stable to stand on and it's very rigid. Now I'll be going through the nose to tail specs of the Nixie Monterey board. So at the nose, you can see there's the handle, the valve, and then you can see three rows of bungee deck webbing. As you go on, there is your second bladder. That's where you inflate, right here. You can kind of see the outline of this bladder as well. So, the Monterey features four free D-rings. So, for the kayak conversion seat, you would use these ones over here. And you can see the Scotty mounts. So, there is a total of two Scotty mounts on this board, which means that you could install a rack or even even fishing rod holders. As we get to the back of this board, it's three rolls of bungee deck webbing at the back. And so you can count a total of 10 action mounts. So the 10 action mounts, they can be used for things like fishing rod holders, cup holders, cell phone holders, action camera holders, a whole bunch of different stuff. So you can see there's a little bit of dirt on there I have to clean. So they're located over here. There's one there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So a total of 10 action mount holders. The Nixie Monterey G4 also has three handles. So 
So one at the front, so they can guide along when you're in the water. This middle carry handle, which is actually very comfortable. It's made of a nylon sort of material. And then one just right at the back there. At the bottom of the Nixie Monterey, you could see there's a D-ring right over there. And this is the paddle holder. To be honest, I'm not the biggest fan of these bungee paddle holders. They're kind of awkward to get to right at the front. And then you can see the outline here more clearly of the second bladder. And finally, you get the three fin setup. Now these fins are USC slash FCS make, which means that you can swap them with different fins. So you have these five inch side fins over here and the board comes with a nine inch center fin right over here. Of course, this can be swapped out with racing fins, river fins. So what are my on water impressions of the Nixie Monterey? Pretty good, I really like it actually. The board just feels very rigid like that extra bladder in the middle you can definitely feel the rigidity like even when you bounce on it it definitely feels stiffer than the Newport for sure so in terms of stability standing on this thing no problem at all there is absolutely zero kickback um, I'm standing on it now I can kind of do this while I'm paddling my cell phone is there so I don't want to do that too much but yeah the stability of this board is very impressive and I like the fact that you could lean into the strokes a little bit more without having the kickback that the Newport has whenever you're leaning it onto its side to make it track a little bit better maneuverability wise I was actually very impressed for a long board this did really well um, tracking wise I would say it's it tracks very well it took about 10 11 strokes before I had to really correct versus when I was shooting the other day the iRocker all around 11 ultra that was about six strokes but that's also because I I feel it's because of the all around 11s fin setup it has two center fins instead of the three fin setup and I feel like the three fin setup will give you a little bit better tracking. So overall, it's a great board. Highly recommend it. So what are my impressions of the kayak setup? I like it. Like I feel pretty comfortable just leaning back, paddling here. The seat is a very comfortable, I must say. I really like the way Nixie designed the seat. Very cushiony. Feels nice on my back as well. Um, I'll have to report when I do this for a longer time period. But right now, it feels really nice. I like the kayak paddle attachment. Like This feels really cool motion that I'm doing, just paddling on a paddle board. And in terms of tracking in the kayak setup, the Monterey is actually like a really good board for this. It's nice and wide and stable. It's like you're on a giant platform, but you're paddling and it tracks very well. It doesn't, it doesn't fishtail very much at all. I think it tracks better than a lot of recreational kayaks actually thanks to its fin setup. Those of you who might be looking at the Nixie Monterey might be wondering what the difference is between that and the Nixie Newport. Well, here I'll show you. So as you can see, right at the front of the board, you can see the length difference already. We got the tails somewhat aligned anyway, but the Monterey is a foot longer. It's also two inches wider. So as you can see as well, there's a lot more bungee deck webbing right on the Monterey at the front as opposed to Nixie has a little bit this is good for like smaller things like sandals, water bottles that I usually do. But if you have a dry bag and you have like a whole bunch of cargo to go with you, the Monterey might be the best bet. In terms of what's on board, the Nixie Monterey comes with 10 action mounts as opposed to the Nixie Newport, which has five. So one, two, 
three, four, and then five right at the back. I do actually like the placement that the Monterey has on one of the action rounds. I feel that you can get the best camera footage right at the front, so I do like that placement. The Monterey also comes with Scotty mounts, which the Newport does not. It's also a bit more of a heavy duty board. So this is partially because of the two bladders. The Newport just has the one. So this helps really keep the board to be extra rigid, especially just standing in the water. You can feel the difference instantly. That was one of the first things that I noticed between the Monterey and the Newport. But as a result, the, New the Monterey is actually three, four pounds heavier. On top of this, the Monterey is three pounds heavier and it holds 350 liters of air versus the Nixie Newport, which holds 300. And finally, the last difference is the D-rings. The Monterey features 18 D-rings. So you can see that there's an extra row at the front and then there's also four extra ones right in the middle while the new par Newport has two at the front for bungee deck webbing and only two free D-rings. Both boards also have D-rings right at the nose as well. These are the accessories that come with the Nixie Monterey G4. So there's the carbon hybrid paddle, the pump, and then the bag. This is the Nixie Monterey bag. So as you can see, it has a padded back along with shoulder straps. And it also has a little pouch here. So if you un undo this, you can just tuck these shoulder straps just in here. Or it can be a little pocket for things that are not in the way. So as you see, we'll do the main pocket first. Very big, so it can open quite large which is awesome especially for a bigger board like this so that is what it's inside and then these are the fin pockets so i usually like to put my larger fin here this is the bigger pocket and then my side fins go in here it's the second biggest pocket and then i usually put the handles for the pump in here so this bag also features the front pocket. So you can see, I usually like to put my leash, the repair kit, and other miscellaneous things I might have. There's the instructions. And then finally, you'll see there's buckles that keep it together. Now what these buckles do is, not only do they keep the package tight, but you can put your paddle right in here. So if you put, for example, Your kayak conversion paddle, you can just fit it right in here. So you go like that, and then you buckle the straps, and that keeps it right in place. There's also little drains on the back, on the bottom, I mean. So if there's water that is in your bag, it just drains right out, no problem. This is the manual pump that comes with it. Um, in this particular instance, I actually used an electric pump, the Outdoor Master Shark 2. But this manual pump just goes up, down, and there is the PSI gauge right over here, as you can see. So if you're looking to inflate, you put this right here, you screw it on, and this allows it to inflate. You can feel the air. If you wanted it, to deflate, you just screw this guy in, and it actually sucks the air out of the board if you're actually trying to get that extra little bit out. It's actually pretty handy. So this pump has three settings. So as you can see, for lower pressure, zero to six. So this allows, this uses both chambers when it's pumping up and down switch to this one. It's recommended at about 8 to 11 PSI, use this. 
<laughs> so then it uses only one chamber whenever you put this guy down. And this is for the harder pumps. So towards the end of it, whenever it's really getting tough, this makes it a little bit easier, but it also pumps out less air. Overall, this is one of the better manual pumps that comes with these boards. So if you like manual pumps, I personally recommend it, but I usually go for electric. One thing I wanted to mention about the paddle is the length that it extends to. So I'll have the conversion in inches in the editing of this video. So the minimum is 175 centimeters for shorter folks. And the maximum is 215 centimeters. I usually like to have it around there just so that I have a little bit more power per stroke, but sometimes I do 210 as well. I'm a bit of a taller guy. But overall, I like the handle of this. It's a nice plastic handle. It feels very good in your hands, especially if you're paddling for multiple hours, which often I am. So yeah, Nixie did a very good job with this carbon hybrid paddle. I must say it is one of the better ones out of the regular priced inflatable SUP models. Now we're gonna go through the likes versus the dislikes that I have with the Monterey. So my overall impression is this is a really solid board. This is a very stable board. You can feel the rigidity right when you're standing on it. I love that they included extra deck webbing. The 10 action mounts are really cool. Although I kind of feel like maybe two of them are a little bit, they're sort of in the exact same place as the other ones. So may not necessarily need it, but not a big deal. I also love the construction of this board. The board is just so well made. It features two chambers right in the middle and the front features carbon layer right on the side, carbon side rails. And it also features dual layer fusion technology, which is what most inflatable subs are starting to come up with, with their technology. So they're staying within the cutting edge of that. So one of the things that I wasn't as big of a fan of was the fact that it might be, it's a bit of a bigger board might be a bit of a heavier package. I do love the bag that it comes with, but for a smaller person, it might be a bit too bulky, especially with this 25 pound board, plus the paddle, plus whatever accessories they have in here. It weighs it up and it makes it feel about 40 pounds. So for a smaller person, you may want to consider the Nixie Venice if stability is very important for you. But when comparing this to the new port, I actually like this a little bit more, just in terms of the stability, the rigidity of the board. Okay. In terms of warranty and shipping, the Monterey G4 features a two year warranty and a 30 day money back guarantee. And the shipping time is actually very good as well. I ordered this and it took about a week, week and a half to go from California all the way to Canada. I did have to pay a little bit of a fee for duty being in Canada. Government likes their duty charges. Do I recommend the Nixie Monterey G4? Yes, absolutely. It's very stable for those bigger guys and gals. It's a fantastic board for you. Even if you're smaller, this thing just feels like a vessel. And if you're paddling with your family, if you want a kid with you, a dog, or even two adults, this can accommodate you as well. 